I can't stand trees when I hear suspenders and the rock. Oh, shall I live just like my dear mama? ODD starts off the video by listing the world's largest trees. It's interesting, but meaningless in the grand scheme of the video. Now these are just some of the world's tallest trees that are standing today. Needless to say, the sizes of some of Earth's remaining trees are absolutely mind-blowing. And the thing is, they used to be much bigger. Here's an article about an Australian mountain ash from 1872. The tallest tree ever measured was not a sequoia, but a type of eucalyptus, an Australian hardwood tree. Do the trees of the world get bigger and bigger the further we go back in history? We have some records of men cutting down extremely large trees in mass quantities. If trees of this magnitude were cut down by men in the 18 and early 1900s, then that begs the question, have we cut down even bigger trees before that? Well, I get the logic here. Tree height does not equate with age. The world's oldest trees are not the world's tallest trees. As a tree gets taller, it becomes more and more difficult to pump water to the very top parts. Less water means smaller leaves, and smaller leaves mean less photosynthesis, meaning less growth at the top. Simply put, a tree's height is not an indicator of its age. Have we cut down even bigger trees before that? We don't know, but we do know that men love mindlessly taking out trees like there's no tomorrow. Mountain ash was and is an important construction material in Australia. An important construction material. An important construction material. You don't fuck that now! Here the Bible says tree, and I think this is referring only to the world tree, also known as the tree of life, located at the center of the world, and that would be the North Pole. Wow. Where do I start with this? How is the Bible a good source of tree height information? The Christian faith does not believe in a world tree at the North Pole. The tree is from a dream of King Nebuchadnezzar's, that he wants the prophet Daniel to interpret. It's not a real tree. The dream tree is actually a metaphor for Nebuchadnezzar's need to humble himself before God. Again, it's not a real tree. Did you stop reading your Bible after the word tree? Now even the Bible is being contorted to fit your fucked up flat earth paradigm. That's unexpected. Maybe humongous trees used to be the norm. We are told that natural landmarks like the Devil's Tower are made by lava cooling in that shape, and that the lava dries up into neat little hexagonal columns, but when you look into how basalt columns are formed, you will not be able to watch how they are formed. Instead, we are told to just believe that basalt columns are the result of lava cooling down and cracking into hexagonal columns on its own. But when we look at how lava actually works, it never dries like that. It oozes chaotically before cooling down and drying in a random manner. It's merely circumstantial. No one has ever witnessed basalt columns form, therefore the official explanation is very much up for debate. First of all, Devil's Tower is not basalt. It's a phonolite. Secondly, Preliminar jointing is a well-studied phenomenon of igneous rocks. It occurs during cooling and does not occur at surface level. Those pahoehoe lava flows you show only describe the top of the lava. Below the surface, the lava is cooling. As it cools, it is jointing, or breaking, into geometric shapes. Usually six-sided, but five-sided or seven-sided columns are not uncommon. This exact cooling process is seen when a mud puddle dries. The evidence is not circumstantial, but exacting. So is the Devil's Tower an ancient tree stump? Are there more of these kind of structures? The answer is yes. The flight meets back on the menu, boys! 